Good evening everybody and welcome to our transition evening video. I am really sorry that we can't invite you all into the school at this present time, but this video I hope will reassure you that we're doing our very best to make sure that your son and daughter can continue with their education and catch up on any time that has been lost at all. Each video will be bespoke to your particular child's academic year group and it will give you an opportunity to meet the key staff that are involved in supporting your child during this academic year and for us to convey that key information that is important for them and relevant to them at their particular stage in their studies. My role here is the priority is to ensure that every child is making progress in the school but also my key priority at the moment is to keep everybody safe and to keep the school operational. I am therefore asking at the beginning of this video for us to consider the situation at the moment and ask for your support with us in ensuring that all of our safety guidelines are adhered to, to talk to your child about that, to ensure that they do have a face covering when they come to school here every single day, to ensure that their journey is to travel directly to and from school. And the community police have asked me to um, convey that message, that it is really important that students aren't congregating at the end of the school day or before the school day as well. Our students here in the main have been absolutely brilliant in the way that they've adopted our safety routines, they're complying with our zones and they are wearing the face coverings in the internal spaces and they have absolutely come back bursting with enthusiasm to be back at school. As a school, we're all delighted to have them back. And that's why I want to keep the school open and operational. And that's why I really need your support in ensuring that your child fully understands the implications of our safety routines and why it absolutely is so important that we all keep to them and follow them through. Now, our learning platform has been to use extensively the Google platform and the Google Classroom. And this worked really well for us during lockdown. Since we've been back, we're continuing to post all of our work into our Google Classrooms. And this will also mean that if your child is away from school because they are self-isolating, then they should have full access to the Google Classroom and all the work that is being set to enable them to continue. The Google Classroom will also form a massive part of our contingency plan should we have to have part or a full closure. If we do have to send a bubble home, then your child can expect a combination of the Google assignments with live video recorded lessons being put into there and actually assignments that they can then continue to work on. And it will also include a combination of live lessons as appropriate. Now these will vary by year group. They will vary by the staff capacity that we have and the staff availability that we do have at these times. But all year groups will continue with their curriculum and we will support them to ensure that they can catch up and that we can cover all the essential work that they need for this year. Can I also ask that if at this moment your child doesn't have access to IT at home and you are suffering any financial difficulties, then please do contact us at the school because the government has provided additional funding for us to help those students and to help you to ensure that your child doesn't miss out on any important education as we move forward. Now, each year group will have its own specific needs for their year group. Our younger students are transitioning into secondary school and middle school is resettling in after such a period of being away. And then our exam groups are becoming a primary focus for us because obviously we're looking towards their exams in 21. As it stands at the moment, the government has not given any special consideration or concessions to the way that those examinations will be held. So it is our primary job at the moment to focus on ensuring that those students are prepared, that they're ready, that we do have the regular assessments on them and that they are fully prepared. And the year 11s and 13s especially, we will work really hard to ensure that their curriculum is not disrupted and that we can give them all the support that we can to move them on to the next stage, whether that be their sixth form, university or work. Now this is quite a difficult time, but here at school we've embraced it, we're back to normal, the students are really engaging with their lessons and it is absolutely wonderful to have the school back alive and full of students, but we want to keep it that way and we want to continue to be able to offer that level of education that we've always had. So please 
I ask for your support with our safety plans. I ask for your support in out there in the community. And I hope that this evening will really give you a sense, a further sense of the amount of work that is going on to support every year group in every different age group and to make sure that your sons and daughters are incredibly well catered for and looked after here at Rodin Valley, which is exactly what we want to continue to do. Thank you very much for listening to me and I hope that you do find the rest of these videos informative. Thank you. And, and if you do have any questions, please don't ever hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much. Let me extend my welcome to you as well, year eight parents, um, carers and to the students. So we are at the next stage on the year seven year journey, seven year pathway here at Roding Valley. Obviously, year seven had its uh, um, differences and obviously the students spent a significant amount of time not in school doing online learning. And where we go from here is to build on uh, the skills that they were learning in year seven and to develop them further so that they approach their studies and are more and more confident in what they are learning and the way that they are learning it. And later in this uh, presentation, Miss Larkin will be speaking about how we're going to use the skills um, to build on those um, teaching and learning initiatives that we started showing the students in year seven. The vision for the school remains the same. We want all young people to be aspirational, respectful, and to endeavor to be the best that they can be. Ultimately, we want every student to achieve the best that they can. We want to be a school that encourages all our students to endeavor to achieve their potential. And a school where, with the full support of us and of you, that your child will achieve as well as they can be and can do and achieve a positive progress score. This summer, obviously, um, there were no formal exams for year 11 and year 13. But based on the calculated grades that were submitted for our students, we had um, outcomes that were significantly above the Essex and national averages for last academic year, 2019. And as you can see from the graph, we have continued um, our upward trajectory um, in terms of um, our outcomes both at grade four and above for English and maths and at grade five and above. Once again, grade four remains the level that students must achieve without needing to reach English and maths post 16, but the grade five will be known as a strong pass and is equivalent to a high C or low B on the old grading system. We're incredibly proud of all our year 11s, but there were some exceptional performances. And as you can see from here, here are the top 10 in terms of the number of grade nines, grade eights and grade sevens that they achieve. Remembering that grade nine is a very top um, percentage of students who have achieved a grade seven or above. Likewise, the grade um, seven is the equivalent of an old A um, in that grading system. Year 13 was no different. And we had a number of successes there with students traveling off to university um, Mashra to Imperial, Maisha to um, Skidmore College in New York, and Alex um, off to Warwick University to study maths. But it's not just about the um, A-levels taking them to university. It, it also is about opening up high-level apprenticeships as well. And there we have a number of our students who have gone on to um, study um, either sponsored degrees with Hill, like Tanim and Harry, or um, gone on to high level apprenticeships like Sam and Luke, and also Hannah, who's gone off to do, do a legal secretary course as well. Many of our year 13s also went off to university, um, and here are just a few of them. Um, a wide variety of places that they've gone to study a variety of courses, and we wish them all the very best in their future at university and the courses that they have studied. So, who are the key people who are going to be supporting your child? Well, obviously, there's me, myself, Mr. Mammon, the deputy head teacher. Then have Mrs. Dyer, who's the other deputy head teacher, Miss Larkin and Mr. Vermark, and Mr. Price, the three assistant head teachers, Miss Edwards, the year progress leader, and Mrs. Collins, who oversees literacy and teaching and learning. 
Hello there, uh, my name is Miss Larkin and I'm Assistant Head Teacher at Rowling Valley High School for Teaching and Learning. So I'm just um, sort of speaking to you today as part of your transition presentation, just to keep you guys up to speed with what goes on in the classroom and what your son or daughter will be experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. And I just want to make sure that I get across that our two main areas of focus remain just as they have been over the past couple of years with our ACE framework, which is what we base all of our lessons on. And that idea that we teach all of our, all of our lessons right to the top, we pitch them really high and we scaffold to support students that need it. And obviously that really, really helps support the progress that our students make on a day to day basis. Again, just a reminder, really, as to what goes on in the classroom. We've still got a massive emphasis on our teaching and learning ambassadors. We still nominate those in our lessons to get them to take those leadership roles on board. We still have our green pen marking. It's a big part of our staple equipment at Rodin Valley where students act on the verbal feedback from the teachers that are giving them lesson and act on their work using their green pen. Our do it now is a huge part of our lessons to get those students hooked into those tasks. We've got our AFL, our assessment for learning ideas, with our rag cards, our traffic light system, and of course our really, really important closing the gap tasks after students receive feedback from their teachers after every assessment window. Now just on that closing the gap, I just want to raise your attention to this, that closing the gap is always done and the tasks that are based on closing the gap are always done on a yellow piece of paper and they're always kept inside books or folders or maybe even now potentially stored on Google Classroom. So do keep a lookout for those as parents because they give that really, really crucial feedback to students to help them move on um, to the next level after an assessment. We also have our tried and tested revision techniques that go in our classroom on a day to day basis, which I will be talking to you about in more detail and retrieval. That idea that we're testing our students constantly on the previous knowledge that they should have learnt to try and keep it in the forefront of their minds. So in terms of what you guys can do now as parents to help your son or daughter at this really, really crucial stage um, in their education, I've just got a few handy tips for you and just a few um, resources really that I want to share with you all that you can find on our website. So first of all, you're probably very familiar with this and it is obviously Google Classroom. Now you're probably all aware that we heavily relied on Google Classroom during our lockdown period. Um, we stored all of our individual subject resources on there. We put all our lesson material on there. And we of course included our video recorded instruction on there as well to ensure that students can engage with learning even whilst being at home. Now to keep that consistency, we've retained Google Classroom and rather than using show my homework to record homework, we are now putting all of our home learning onto Google Classroom. Um, so essentially, it's so important that students know how to use this. And it's really, really important that they're in a routine of checking their Google Classroom, checking what assignments have been posted, when they need to hand it in. But more importantly, seeing that feedback that they'll get from their teachers off the back of the home learning that they submit. If you want to find out more about Google Classroom, if you want some step-by-step -step guidance, or you'd like to see the codes for each classroom that your son or daughter is meant to be in, then please do access our home learning booklet. The home learning booklet is under the home learning tab um, on our website. And there's also a really, really helpful YouTube link there um, to a video that I recorded a couple of weeks ago on frequently asked questions about Google Classroom. And please do access that. I'll give a little talk through essentially of all the best ways of using this fantastic tool. And just whilst I'm on Google Classroom, I just wanna take this opportunity to quickly mention three key things. First things first, all homework tasks that are set to be done at home after a normal school day are all clearly labeled as assignments. These assignments have a due date, they have clear instruction and they have an option to hand in the work off the back of this assignment. That's what students should be doing on top of the work that they do in school. A second tier to this is if your son or daughter is self-isolating for any reason and they still need to access the work that's being taught in school, then we have decided to start storing this on Google Classroom too, so it's all in the same place and we store this as material. 
This material is essentially, as I've just explained, it's the lesson content that your son or daughter would have learned in school, but potentially they're at home self-isolating, so therefore they can't access school at this present time. So all teachers are regularly uploading their material to their Google Classroom so that your son or daughter can access it if they need to. I also want to take this opportunity to remind everybody that students are to submit any work they've completed at home, either it being um, a home learning task they do at home or if they're self-isolating, then we would really like them to hand it in on Google Classroom too. We're trying to get a system where everything is done in the same place. And again, if your son or daughter is unsure about how to hand their work in on Google Classroom, then please do look at the YouTube clip that I previously mentioned that's on our website under the Home Learning tab. One last thing on Google Classroom. If you'd like to be linked to your child's account, then I can do that for you. All you need to do is email me your child's full name and their year group and the email account that you would like me to link that belongs to you so that you can see all the home learning assignments that your son or daughter is being set. So please do let me know if you would like to be linked to your child's account. So a few more things that I just want to take a moment to mention then, a few more resources that you guys can tap into to really support the learning um, of your child. So just obviously I've already talked through Google Classroom, but I'm just going to talk about um, some things that are on our website. Please do take, take a moment to access some of our fantastic reading lists that all sit on our website at present. Every subject has a reading list and this reading list is closely linked to the curriculum content that's taught in school and it all flows in order of what they study at what time. Okay, so there's a nice little example on the screen there of the English academic reading list and we've got little subtopics on there so that students can see what they're learning at present and what they can read then at home to get themselves thinking um, a bit more in detail about their subject. I also wanted to um, take this time to mention to you that all of our Rosen Valley High School revision and study techniques are also stored on our website. Again, on our website, please go to revision and you'll find a tab there and you'll find all of our revision resources. You'll find templates, you'll find step-by-step -step guidance, and you'll also find the presentation that I gave to all students last academic year as part of our revision workshop. Again, all of these things we're trying to embed into our home learning program, but it'd be really, really great if parents can have access to all of this and know all those things that we're trying to encourage our students to do. And this is just a little example of what you'll find on our website. You'll find a list of all the techniques that we teach in school, a bit of a run through on how to deliver it as well, and then some examples, as you can see there too. So again, um, just linking to what I've just said about how you can get started. One of the best things that you can do now whilst you're um, in the year group that you're in is start to think about how you can push that home learning further and how you can turn all that fantastic stuff that you do in lesson into a piece of revision using all the fantastic revision guidance that's available on our website. So I'm going to end there. Thank you so much for listening. If you've, any, if you've ever got any questions about what goes on in the classroom from a teaching and learning point of view or about home learning, then please do get in touch with me. Um, as I said previously, my name is Miss Larkin and my email is on the screen now, plarkin at rodinvalley.net. I wish your son and daughter all the luck um, going forward into this academic year and I hope they have a fantastic year with us at Rodin Valley. Thank you for listening. The result we're following at Rodin Valley is based on the reformed qualifications. At GCSE, the majority of the subjects are graded 9 to 1, with grade 9 being the top grade, and only 3% of students will achieve a grade 9. So it is quite an achievement. The reformed GCSEs are challenging, they're 100% final exam based, and you need to develop skills over the whole time to actually be able to achieve the top grades. The reformed A levels are, are harder as well, and they're 100% final assessment based. They actually don't have any AS levels or resets. It's a five year curriculum for your child. Every year is important. They will be well prepared, but they will have to also work really hard. For students to be successful, they need to be independent learners. They need to develop resilience. They need to make use of the supports available in subject areas. Subject areas will go over and above 
to ensure students can access the course and be successful in that, but they need to ask as well. The key thing would be for them to also read widely and develop a wide general knowledge. As a parent, you need to take an interest in what they are studying, discuss potential careers with them and actually create an excitement about the careers and support them. And that's the major part because they will fail. The curriculum is challenging. It will be hard. When they fail, encourage them to try again until they succeed. In terms of assessments, we got a slight change this year. Uh, we will only collecting attitudes to learning in autumn to give a good indication if students have settled in well. We will have exam sessions starting in January that will be uh, invigilated in the hall. It will be a formal exam uh, session and we do that every year for every year group because it starts preparing them for the rigor of actually the exams they will be sitting. And there will be a final assessment in, in the summer of 2021. These assessments are based on actually a, a range of smaller assessments that's been done and they will inform us in terms of the final uh, stage of their progress at the end of the year. Your report you'll receive back from the school would be based on the, the color code report. You will not receive any grades. We will tell you whether the students have mastered it. And that, that actually means in terms of uh, the grades or in terms of progress that they are bound to exceed the end of year 11 target grade. Secure would actually indicate that they are on track to achieve their grade. Insecure, they're marginally below the, the target grade. and They actually need to put a bit of effort in. And if it's a concern, they most likely will not achieve the end of year 11 target grade And they, if they don't change their studying habits. For attitude to learning as well, mastered would be that they're really doing more, more than they should. They are independent. They're actually working uh, and reading wider than, than we would expect to be secure, they are doing what we expect. Insecure is they do most of the work, uh, but they're actually not really there where we need them to be to do well. And cause for concern is actually there is a real cause for concern. They're not engaged. They're actually not uh, completing the work to the standard that is ex expected for them to be successful at, at the end of year 11. We as a school will do everything to make a child successful. We'll work with them, we'll support them, we'll teach them a, a range of skills, but we need to work as a partnership. And if we do that, we will manage to actually get the grades that your, your child deserves at the end of year 11. Thank you. Hello, my name is Miss Edwards and I am the Year 8 Progress Leader. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all the parents and carers of our amazing Year 8 students. I hope that you find the information that I'm about to present to you informative and hopefully it answers any questions that you may have regarding anything in Year 8. I'm sure you're all very familiar with the procedures and policies in place here at Roding Valley High School after a very successful, albeit very short, Year 7. However, we need to make sure that we've got a clear expectation and vision for all students in Year 8. We want the Year 8 to be different to Year 7 but also different to what they'll experience in year nine. So we've set out a clear vision for our year eight cohort, both an academic and social vision. So our academic vision for all students in year eight is to provide them with the relevant skills to achieve to their highest attainment. We also want to encourage enthusiasm and a proactive interest in learning. A social vision that we've outlined for our year eight cohort is for them to become responsible and well-rounded citizens. We also want them to develop aspirations throughout and beyond school and to work hard to achieve them. I'm sure you're all very familiar now with the new start and finish times throughout the day, as well as the year group bubbles that we have created to ensure that everyone in our school and community are safe. Students will enter the school at 8.30 a.m. via the gate on Brook Road. They then line up ready for their period one teacher, who is their academic mentor, to take them into their first period. In this first period, which I'm about to talk about in detail, they learn and study various different things, including character and culture, as well as careers and literacy, which Miss Collins has previously spoken about. The students have two 25 minute breaks throughout the day, and the day will conclude at 2.40 p.m. where they will be released through the Brook Road gate 
hopefully to head home straight home and start their home, home learning tasks. The character and culture key phrase I'm sure you've heard thrown around quite a lot of recent times. But what actually is it and what does it represent here at Roding Valley High School? The character and culture provision is allowing our students to engage in accessible and meaningful opportunities and experiences to develop key character traits to prepare them for later on in life. And this is done through a variety of different ways, both throughout their period one program, but also throughout numerous different opportunities, both during school time, outside of school time and during holiday time. We want to make sure that we have a positive school climate where all students feel safe and valued. We want students to be motivated, independent and responsible. We want students to show empathy, respect and understanding towards each other. And we want the students to contribute to our school and the wider school community. To achieve this, we have set out numerous different programs for students to become involved with. Things such as the Duke of Edinburgh Award, which during year nine, you will have the opportunity to partake in. We have a school magazine where students contribute, where students edit, and students are involved in making the whole magazine on a monthly basis. We have trips and visits to different educational institutions, as well as various different service learning projects, which students are able to take part in. Looking more specifically at how we implement our character and culture program throughout our period one tutor time program, which is twice a week on a Thursday and Friday morning, we have specific terms, sorry, we have specific uh, themes that we have for each term. Some of those themes you can see on the screen at the moment that include things like mental health, resilience, uh, looking at ways to promote attendance, cultural appreciation, human rights, how we become independent learners and independent citizens. So each week we have a new theme. That theme is then um, developed throughout the period one program for that week. So students will spend two mornings per week looking at the theme and developing their ideas around that theme. This can be through discussion based activities with the academic mentor. It can be through discussion as a whole class or it can be through more written work where students actually study the concept and then write a response around it. Another really important program that is part of our period one um, curriculum is our careers program and our careers provision. This is around the Gatsby 8 benchmarks, which are outlined on your screen at the moment. These are set out by the government and we ensure that these uh, conditions are being met through our careers program. Our careers program is also tied into the themes of the week that I've previously talked about on the last slide. I'll leave this slide on for a moment just so you can read through the Gatsby 8 benchmarks. I'd like to take a moment to talk about our positive action for learning framework, which ensures that all students are able to learn to the best of their ability within the certain classroom environment. We have extremely high expectations of our students and expect that there's mutual respect between the teachers and the staff. We have a six to one ratio of rewards and celebrations versus sanctions. And a lot of our classroom practice is to reward positive behaviors. All students start with 1000 points, which assumes a positive start to the year. If students are being disruptive in lessons, we follow the PAL uh, framework which I'll talk about in just one moment. Within this framework, it relies heavily on communication between the teacher and the parent and receiving support from yourself at home. There are clear consequences with clear sanctions that have been placed. In the first instance, your child will be given a positive action for learning number one, which is the first warning for their disruptive behavior in lesson. If those behaviours continue, they will be given a positive action for learning number two, which they will be asked to move seats within the classroom to avoid the distractions that they were having. If this behaviour continues, they will be given a positive action for learning number three, which means that they will be removed from their lesson and sent to another lesson from their year group in the department. If a student is being extremely disruptive, then they may be removed from the lesson entirely and be picked up by a member of the senior leadership team 
and taken out of circulation for the rest of that lesson. Teachers will communicate these sanctions with yourself and we expect that you are offering full support at home as well to support us in the classroom. Again, by now you should be aware of our house system. This was launched a couple of years ago and has seen a massive success since we've launched it. There are five houses which are outlined on the screen and your child will be placed into one of those five houses. This is reflected on their school tie and it is the house that they compete in for all of the different house competitions that we run throughout the year. If you'd like any further information about the house system, please feel free to get in contact with Mr. Hussain, who is the teacher in charge of this amazing system that we have on offer at school. In year eight, we have a plethora of opportunities for the students to get involved with. Obviously at the moment, these are very dependent on what's happening with COVID, but as you can see on the screen, there are various opportunities that suit all of the different learners and personality styles that we have here at Reading Valley. We have lots of leadership opportunities, such as form reps and student voice representatives. We also have house leaders for each year group, as well as subject ambassadors for each year group. Year eights have the opportunity to be, opportunity to be guides to show visitors and guests around the school and demonstrate to those visitors the amazing things that have happened here at Roding Valley. We have a large token of extracurricular opportunities for students to become involved with, both PE, academic, and various other opportunities for them. The Jack Petchy Award. Um, we have a debate club, the magazine, the school magazine that I mentioned earlier. We do lots of trips to universities. We have a very good STEM program, so looking at science, technology, engineering, and maths. Um, we have numerous drop-down days around mental health, um, behaviour in the community, drugs and alcohol, and various different reasons for those drop-down days, which always proved to be a brilliant success. We have the drama productions each year, and as I've previously mentioned, the opportunity to participate in the Duke of Edinburgh Award, which will be launched towards the end of year eight. So plenty of opportunities to develop that character and culture of all the students in year eight and get them becoming wider citizens in the community. What are the potential dangers though of this year in year eight? It's often referred to as a dip year due to the fact that it's not year seven where students are settling into the high school and becoming secondary school students. And it's not year eight where students are introduced to GCS sorry, it's not year nine where students are introduced to their GCSEs, they get to pick different subject options, and it's a little bit more um, targeted towards their final exams. So there are some serious concerns for year eights on the whole. Do they become disengaged with their studies and some of the subjects that they are offered? Uh, what impact is social media having on their uh, learning and their school experience? Gaming is another major issue that has uh, taken a leading cause in disengagement of students. Are students spending too much time on these games, on their tablets, um, and therefore not completing home learning, not getting enough sleep, and then are too tired to engage in school life? And poor motivation. So these are some of the potential um, concerns of our Year 8 students at present. And as a school, we are working on various different solutions to try and combat some of these things. I want to see your child at school as much as possible. I know we're going through a difficult time at the moment and our attendance may suffer because of that. But for any small minor tummy bugs, uh, little colds, sniffles and things like that, we should still be attending school. We want students to be in school as much as possible to make learning as best as possible. As well as attendance being a massive um, issue, we need to make sure that punctuality is also being looked into. Students should arrive no later than 8.30am ready for a full day of learning. They need to attend period one as it's one of the most important times of the day where students are given particular messages about room changes, about things that are happening throughout the school and it's a very good time for the academic mentor to provide that support and touch base with each and every student in that tutor group. I've just placed this small little infographic on the screen for you to see what our attendance actually means. 
100% attendance is that your child is in school 190 days in each year. 96% is that the student is missing eight days of education, so they're only present for 182 days. We get quite concerned when the student attends, attendance drops down to 90% or below. That means that they are only attending 171 days out of a possible 190. At the moment, given the current crisis that we, in, we are in, well-being remains at the forefront of everything that we do. We need to ensure that all students are catered for and that their needs are met. We need to offer them a healthy and a balanced diet that needs to be in school and outside of school. We need them to have all the nutrients that they, they need so that they can grow and be healthy. We want students to be active and exercising regularly, both throughout the PE curriculum and outside of school, whether that's just being walking the dog of an evening or walking to and from school. Any physical activity is great for the mind and it's something that we would like to promote massively here at Roding Valley. A healthy work-life balance is important for adults just as much as it is for students. So making sure that students aren't spending their whole evening completing home learning tasks, that they do have a little bit of downtime to watch TV, go on their phones, see their friends. But at the same time, we need to make sure that that's not all they're doing, that they are at home engaging in their home learning tasks. We need to monitor the use of social media platforms on the students' phones, iPads, tablets and different devices. We need to understand what students are accessing and what they're doing whilst they're accessing those platforms. My door is always open and I regularly say to all the students in Year 8 that I'm here to help. Any concern, no matter how big or small, how big or small, I want students to feel comfortable enough to come and seek myself out and have a quick chat or maybe a lengthy chat to me about whatever is bothering them. And that goes for you as parents as well. Please drop me an email or give me a phone call. I'm here to help both the students and yourself to get the best out of all the year eights that we can. I would encourage you to look at your child's device and see what they're accessing in terms of social media and cyberspace. Do you know if your children's accounts are private or are they open? Are you their friend on their Facebook or Instagram accounts so that you can monitor what they're posting and what they're accessing? Are they using a computer at home behind closed doors or is it something that you can monitor as you're walking past? Are you keeping the communication channels out about the social networking sites and the dangers that they can cause and pose? Social media is an excellent tool, but only if it's used in the correct manner. In school, we do a lot about social media use and how we can make sure that we're safe whilst accessing these sites. But I would encourage you to continue to monitor your child's social media use. Finally, how can we help all the Year 8 students to be better, well-rounded citizens, learners and productive members of our society? All students thrive on positive reinforcement. To boost their confidence daily, we need to celebrate all the success, no matter how big or small. We need to make sure that we're setting expectations that are realistic. We need to let them know when we are proud of their, their actions, their behaviours and what they've done or produced throughout a school day. We need to remain positive and highlight to them things that make them feel good. We need them to believe in themselves so that they can produce good work. But most of all, we just need to be there to support all our Year 8 students to become well-rounded citizens who can contribute to society in a positive and effective manner. Please, if you've got any questions regarding anything I've spoken about, get in contact with me via email or telephone. I'm always here to help and I'd love to have a chat with as many of you as possible. So as we conclude um, this presentation, I would just like to um, remind you of um, what you should do and who you should contact if you have any questions. So if it is an individual subject problem, please contact the subject teacher or the head of faculty or head of department. If it's a general issue, please contact your student's academic mentor um, who are uh, similar to their form tutor. If it's to do with progress, please contact myself or Mr. Vermark, Miss Edwards or Mr. Price. If you've got any questions about careers, please contact Mrs. Mason, our careers development manager. And if it's any attendance concerns, please contact Mrs. Lowe. And if you're worried about anything that's stressing you out or anxiety or anything that's worrying you, please contact Miss Edwards or Mr. Price. In fact, contact anyone. Please do keep in touch and make sure we do have the correct email address for you. 
thank you for watching this and um, we hope to see you again on site very soon.